In this movie, we're going to take a look at applying custom textures. We're using our crow model again, and we've picked up somewhat where we left off. We have our crow, and we have all of our UVs laid out. We did alter the configuration just a little bit there from our previous movie. Just kind of shifted things around just so they fit a little bit better, and so that they're a little bit larger in the UV texture editor. And nothing special there. We just uh, rotated things a little bit differently and then did a layout. With all my UVs laid out, I'm ready to export that UV information to a 2D image. And then I can use that 2D image as a template to paint my own texture map for my crow character. So just to get this set up, We'll just keep things clean here. Let's rename our object to Crow, which has no real bearing on our texture map, uh, just a way to keep things nice and neat. And I'll go to my UV texture editor, and what I want to do is take this information and put it into a 2D texture. Under Polygons, I'll choose UV Snapshot. And this is just Maya's tool to take a picture of our UV texture space. Now, UVs are resolution independent, and what this means is that we can set whatever size we want this UV shell to be. Now, it's best to keep these large and then scale the image down if you need to, but by making the image large to begin with, then it gives us more data to work with, and we can create more precise texture maps or better looking texture maps at that larger resolution. And it's much easier just to scale an image down as opposed to scaling an image up, which again, you'll kind of degrade the quality of your texture. So I'm going to keep my size here at 2048, but again, we can change that to whatever size we want. It's always best as well to work in powers of two. So if I were to drop this down, I would drop it down to a 1024 by 1024. Now, both the size and the X and Y are changing automatically there because I have keep aspect ratio turned on. So I can just type in one number and have the other dimension match with it. The next option we have here is the color value. This value is going to control the color of the wireframe that we see. Currently, it's white. I'm going to keep it white. And if we have it as a white color, it'll then place it onto a black background. And that just makes it easy to see. Then we have our image format, and we're going to choose something simple. We're just going to go with JPEG, and that way it'll make a JPEG image for us. The quality of our UV image that we create, or that UV template, it's not going to make a huge difference. JPEG is going to work just fine for us. We could really choose any type of image we want to save it out to. It's not going to affect the quality of anything we paint. Below there, we have the UV range options. Right now, it's set to normal, which is the 0 to 1 texture space. But we do have the ability to take a snapshot of anywhere else within our UV texture area. If we were to choose Enter Range, User Specified, we could then go through and describe the area that we want the snapshot to be from. So we could grab this box over here by using a negative one in the U and a positive one in the V. Now we're not restricted to where those boxes are. We could even take a snapshot of this area over here by doing a negative two and a positive one. And we would just fill in those minimums and maximums. Our UVs are located within the zero to one normal texture range, so we'll just choose that. We'll change the name up here. We'll call this Crow UVs. And we'll just add that extension back there, .jpg. And we'll choose OK. And then Maya will save that out to a specific file. And now let's take a look at that image. And Maya saves it out. We can even look down at the bottom there. Maya's telling us exactly where it's saved, which is the place, same place that we told it to. But it dropped it into my images folder. And we'll take a look. There it is right here. And we can just examine that. There's my white wireframe on a black background. And there are my UVs. This is a perfect UV template. 
I could then take this into a paint program such as Photoshop and then begin painting a texture for my crow. Once I finish painting it, it'll align perfectly back to my UV set. Now we've already painted one, so I'm gonna switch over to my source images directory. And here I have the image of the crow and we'll make that full screen. Now you can see this is kind of a, a real cheap and easy way to paint this. We just kind of cut out from photographs and placed them in here. This is kind of aligned them a little bit there inside of Photoshop. But the main thing to focus on here is that we used that UV template as the region that we needed to paint into. So by painting into that template, now we can take this texture and it will fit perfectly back onto our model. So we'll switch back over to Maya and we can now load that texture back onto our model. So I'm gonna right click and let's assign another material to it. And we'll just use a Lambert. And we'll go to Lambert 2. Go to our color channel, choose the Create Render Node option, and we'll choose File. And File is going to let us select an image located outside of Maya. Brings me to the File Image Name Browser, and we'll choose that and find our crow. There's our crow image, open. And now it's assigned to our model, we can't see it yet. We need to hit six on the keyboard in order to go to a shaded and textured mode. And now that texture, you can see, lines up nicely, all from our UV template and painting within that template. Now we'll make this a little bit better. Let's go to Renderer and let's switch and use our Viewport 2.0. Again, that's more of our advanced renderer there. And I'll select my model and I wanna go back to that Lambert material. And let's change this from Lambert to Anisotropic, knowing that we have feathers on our model. And now we get that specular highlight. We can see it there. We can also see it there on our wing, and we'll just kind of shift back here where we can see it a little better. Also, there it is there. And what I'll do is actually add that same texture map that we already painted. Let's add that back to the specular color. Right now, that specular color is gray. Well, it doesn't really look all that natural when it's that gray color on those feathers. So by adding the texture back to the specular channel, then the specular highlight will be of the texture itself. And that's gonna look a lot more realistic. We'll choose the Create Render Node option again. I'll choose File, go to my Image Browser, load my texture. And now it's toned way back, but when we move, we can see that it does blend in nicer and we're not getting such an artificial look.